Hello out there folks. In this video, we're gonna be looking at force feedback in the sim Le Mans Ultimate by Studio 397 and Motorsport Games and how to get it feeling just right. In fact, um, for those of you who know R Factor 2, uh, getting it to feel as close as damned it to R Factor 2, which has amazing force feedback. I know this as a long time R Factor 2 user. And hopefully this video should help a lot of you out on different wheels, but uh, it should definitely help any of you out who are using a Fanatec. I'm on a Fanatec uh, Club Sport wheel. Uh, it's a CSW 2.5 and uh, it'll specifically help you out for that, but it should also help uh, users of other wheels because there's one very important setting that I think people miss. Um, now, before I get any further, I've got to thank uh, Flip Flops for he actually gifted me this game or, or this simulation. Thank you ever so much, mate. And uh, when I first went round to his house to try this sim out before I had it, um, I didn't know what to expect because I'd heard all sorts of things on the forums, uh, at different forums, as, as well as uh, Studio 397's own Le Mans Ultimate Forum. Uh, I've heard them at Race Department. People saying that the force feedback in LMU was not as good as R Factor. Other people were saying it was better. Other were pe people were saying uh, they were having all sorts of terrible problems with it and I didn't know whether to expect something half decent good or uh, a complete mess and when I did try it I was actually reasonably impressed um, however since I've had it on my own rig um, I have been finding the force feedback a bit weird a bit clunky not as good as R Factor 2 and I can tell you now I have managed it now with uh, a couple of days of tuning it in to get it feeling pretty much just like R Factor 2 and I'm really really happy so I'm going to show you how I did that um, so we're going to go into uh, on oh, but by the way for this uh, we're going to be using the Aston Martin GTE at Sebring so we're going to go into uh, settings go to controls and go to force feedback and I really hope this helps someone out so these are my force feedback settings for my wheel um, as you can see, effects are on. I don't need to invert the forces for this wheel, so they're off. My wheel is an 8 Newton meter base, so that's what I've got it at. My force feedback strength is 55. No force feedback smoothing, no minimum steering torque, and uh, collision strength and steering torque sensitivity are at defaults of 100 and 150 there. And I am using also uh, constant steering force effect. Um, I'm not sure exactly what that means, but it seems to help. Um, I'll come back to that in a moment. Anyway, the really important bit here to get this sim feeling really damn good is uh, under calibrate. So if we come down to this section here, you've got, now there is a preset in this, as you can see down here by detected devices, it's detected by wheelbase. So it does all of this as a default setting. However, there is a problem, especially if you're used to R Factor 2. So you, you're using the wheel range from the vehicle, which limits the range of your, your wheel, as in degrees you can turn it to whatever the degrees of the, of the car you're driving is. And uh, you're using steering maximum rotation from the driver. That's the driver from the wheelbase, um, at least as I understand it. So that's on by default. And it sets your maximum wheel rotation to 900. However, this is where the problem comes in because I'm used to R Factor 2. In R Factor 2, it does all of this, all the same thing, this is on and this is on, but it sets the wheel to auto. And uh, if you have an auto setting on your wheel, if you've got a Fanatec uh, wheel like this, you probably will. Um, I'm not sure about Thrustmasters and everything else. But what you have to have is that set not to auto you have to have it set to the maximum range of your wheel and there's a really good reason for this and uh, just to show you how this works and why I was having problems feeling the, uh, the the steering wasn't right it was overly sensitive it was clunky it was it was notchy um, I'm gonna bring up my Fanatec control panel here so as you can see these are my uh, Fanatec 
uh, force effects. You can copy those down if you like. These two are down at zero because they don't actually do anything in, in uh, LMU or R Factor 2 for that matter. But this is the problem I was having. Now, you can see my sensitivity is set to 900. Now, in R Factor 2, if I have all of these settings set up like this here, it will then set this value to auto. So I have my wheel, if I move in my Fantech control panel over here from 900 to auto, it has that set to auto and it has it set to auto in here and that works perfectly. Every car, I have my wheel physically matching up to the wheel on screen and I get the correct uh, amount of degrees of rotation for that car. In this, it's the other way around. Don't have it set to auto or whatever your wheel is, just have it set to, whether your wheels are uh, a 1040, 1080 degrees of rotation, or 900 or less, have it set to the maximum degrees. That is so important and it has literally changed the game for me. So um, coming back to uh, LMU here, I'm gonna show you this because I can actually change that value um, on the fly from the buttons on my wheel. So I can change it from auto to 900. I'm gonna show you what happens. And uh, to do that, we're gonna jump into the car here. Now, to get it feeling exactly the same as R Factor 2, I actually went into the car setup for this exact car at this exact track in R Factor 2. And I copied down all of the settings from all of the screens to make this car set up exactly the same as it is in R Factor 2 because people sometimes forget that setups can very much change the way a car feels, especially through the force feedback, especially with things like camber, can really change the way the force feedback feels. So I've set these values to exactly the same setup as they are in R Factor 2 and you'll, you'll see if I go to manage setups, I've actually called it R Factor 2 Aston. So I'm gonna load that. Oh, it's already loaded, but anyway. Um, so in we get. Now, I've got my wheel set to 900. If you watch the wheel on screen, hopefully you can see my wheel here um, physically through the camera here. If you watch, I'm gonna turn my wheel and it goes all the way to the soft stops just there. I will just mention, by the way, that R Factor 2, it actually engages the hard stops of these wheels, brings them closer in, which I really like. Um, in LMU it's just stop, soft stops, but they are quite tough, so that's fair enough. Um, but that's matching exactly. Now, if I change my wheel, its sensitivity from 900 to auto, so I'm going from 900 and I'm changing that to auto. Now watch what happens. I've turned my wheel about 15 degrees to the right and my wheel on screen has you know gone 90 in fact if I turn it quarter of the way around it's gone past 180 it doesn't match up at all and this makes for a really if I go out and drive this car like that it makes the steering really quite oversensitive and also quite notchy and quite clunky it's it's not good so if I then, and by the way, don't do this on the fly, you wanna go back to the garage before you change it. It sometimes works, it doesn't always work if you're in the car, so it's best to do it when you're back in the garage. You wanna go back to your, on my wheel, I'm going back to my sensitivity, and I'm setting it back to 900. Now if I jump in, it's perfectly matched, and it makes the steering come alive it, there's there's all of the uh, the notchiness has gone because well this car is designed to have if you, if you jump into any car with the wrong steering lock on your physical wheel doesn't match up with the wheel on screen you get the wrong lock and it, it it's a bit like a thing I discovered with ACC a lot of people think that set of course competency only by Kunos has really dull force feedback I used to think that until I figured out something uh, in there, which was make sure you got the steering wheel set exactly to the lock of every car. Then it changes completely and the force feedback becomes pretty damn wonderful. But in this, 
I am now driving this and it feels like R Factor 2. You know, it's it's it, it's fantastic. It gives, give, it gives me plenty of car control. Enables me to do flash stuff like this. And the force feedback has completely come alive. And I'm really enjoying LNU now. So like I said, you can muck about with it all day doing stuff like it gives you so much better control over the car. It's just it, and it feels great. I can feel everything. Let's have a look at that on the replay. So there you go. I can drive around like that until the tyres get too hot in a GTE car. It has opened up the force feedback like you wouldn't believe. Um, and another thing I'm going to mention, I'm going to come back to the garage here and uh, tell you something else about the force feedback which is pretty important. Um, so under controls, if we come to force feedback here, um, I did mention earlier that I've got my force feedback smoothing at zero. Now, if you'll find uh, the force feedback is quite detailed in L LMU and it's feeling pretty much the same as R Factor 2 in here, maybe just slightly a little bit less grainy, ever so slightly. But if you don't like that kind of force feedback and you like it a bit smoother, you can turn this up all the way to nine. Um, but I wouldn't recommend it because whilst it does make things like curbs uh, when you hit a curb or any bumps it makes it smoother what you will find is it does make the wheel more springy and uh, if you turn that up and you drive in a straight line in maybe fourth gear doing just over 100 miles an hour you're in a straight line you just flick the wheel slightly just just touch it to the left it'll start oscillating having that at zero gets rid of it um and down here, I don't know what this means, I don't know what it does, but I put it on because that helps with, it seems to help with oscillations, but you can leave that on or off. For me, it seems to, I'm not quite sure. Anyway, um, I just wanted to get that out there for anyone who's struggling with the force feedback. And like I said, I'd, I'd keep that at zero. I really would recommend it. Um, I've got this, the car feels about the same weight as it does in R Factor 2 with this set at 55. In R Factor 2, I have the force feedback strength at 100, but then, uh, sorry, at 45, but then the car specific multiplier at 100. We don't have a car specific multiplier in here, so I've had to kind of make an approximation. So uh, we've just got the one value we can change. And at 55, it feels about the same weight, and it feels lovely. Um, but I can't stress enough that the most important thing is have your wheel set to its its maximum rotation have the maximum rotation of your wheel set in here to match it if if you don't have if if your wheel is not detected then just set this to whatever the maximum rotation of the wheel is or it'll probably do it for you but don't use any auto um uh, uh options that you have in your software especially if you're on a fanatec i don't know if it will work for Thrust masters and all sorts of other different wheels, but um, make sure that matches. Like I said, it's the other way around in R Factor. It's just on auto works. I don't know why. Anyway, um, thanks for watching. I hope that helps someone. And if it has and you like the video, please subscribe to the channel. It really helps with the upkeep of the channel. All the best. Happy sim racing.